Good morning to all of you. So now we are going to discuss about Fresnel's diffraction pattern of a wire. Here is the source of the light energy S and A is the AB is the wire. Okay? And X-ray is the wave front which is coming from the source S. When this X-ray is going to be strike here, then AB portion is going to obstruct the wave front but however due to the diffraction we can get the diffraction pattern in between P and M on the screen due to the dif diffraction we are going to get uh, uh, the diffraction button in between P and M okay and this P to M portion on the screen this is P and this is M this is O this is Q point, this is Y N. Okay. So this P to M portion on the screen will be called as shadow region and above the P below the M portion will be called as illumination. That the name is illumination portion. And the slit is kept at a distance X from the screen like this. So this is the experimental arrangement. So the same thing it has been written. AB is the thin film wire of the thickness D. Now the monochromatic light illuminated with the wire AB on the screen. And the PM region is the shadow region. This PM region whatever I told that is the shadow region. But beyond P and M are called as the illuminated region. And the diffraction band of the decreasing intensity and decreasing thickness. Intensity and decreasing thickness are formed on the screen where beyond P and below P. That means uh, in between this P and M we are going to get the well diffraction pattern above P and below M we are not going to be get the uh, uh, observed the well diffraction pattern means very thin and um, decreasing of intensity of a diffraction pattern can be observed above P and below M. The intensity is in the shadow region will be depends upon the thickness of the wire. So the intensity whatever the we are going to get the diffraction pattern in between P and M the intensity of that diffraction pattern in between P and M or in the shadow region will be depends upon this thickness of the wire. So first case we are going to be consider the thin wire if, if, it, if we are going to take a wire is very thin uh, then what will be the diffraction pattern has been observed in the shadow region here at point Q at point Q suppose a point at point Q we are going trying to observe the intensity due to the diffraction we can see here half of at point Q number of the number of half period zones obstructed in upper and lower half of the wavefront will be different so at point Q we can say that number of half period zones so here we know that a wave front is going to be propagated through a slit or by diff at the time of diffraction this wave front is going to be considered as the numbers of half period zones or it is it will be it will be distributed by the numbers of half period zones like this so this this is the Fresnel's assumption so this these are the numbers of half period zone that we are going to be consider so at point Q above half period zone above half period zone and below half period zone suppose this uh, we are going to consider this this is one half period zone uh, of this wave front x y so at point p at point q so uh, this is the this is the one wave front this is another wave front so numbers of half period zones can be considered for this wave front so at at point q we could not say uh, the above half the large wave uh, larger half period zone is going to be blocked or below have the uh, having the larger half period zone is going to be blocked means at point Q above A and below A the half period zones which are blocked for for Q for the Q point the numbers of half period zones upper side and below side upper above Q and below Q whatever the intensity we are going to be observed uh, it depends upon the half period zone so how, how much half period zone above and below is going to be obstructed due to this wear 
will be different so therefore the intensity at point q will be depends upon the path reference the here the path reference is nothing but b to q and a to b here the two rays will be uh, focused at the point q the path reference will be b q minus a q okay the path reference b q minus a q the bright fringe can be observed will be obtained when the path reference is equal to l lambda and the dark fringe can be observed at q will be obtained if del path reference equal to 2n plus 1 lambda by 2 so here the two things here the two things for bright fringe we are considered the path reference is n lambda for dark fringe we have considered the uh, uh, the, the path reference should have to 2n plus 1 lambda by 2 Be because this for this case we have been considered that here two double slit it is equivalent to double slit experiment see this is the opaque region a b is the where where the uh, the ray the ray or the wave fund is going to be obstructed here so f of a will be act as a slit below a will be act as another slit so f of a one slit below a another slit so it will be act as a double slit so according to double slit experiment whatever we have been studied you can remember for the constructive interference or for the bright fringe the path difference would have to be n lambda and for the destructive interference and due to the dark fringe would be 2n plus 1 lambda by 2 since uh, here also we have been considered path difference for bright is equal to n lambda dark fringe it will be 2n plus 1 lambda by 2 and you have been remembered one thing that the nth bright if we have to consider the maxima at nth bright from q uh, if q is the maxima suppose q is the maxima for uh, nth bright okay so y n distance from o to q if it will y n then it will be n lambda x by d which has been observed from our Young's double slit experiment. Young's double slit experiment. I am going to show you Young's double slit experiment. Uh, we found from the derivation. We found that here y n equal to n lambda capital D by small d. Here capital D is nothing but distance between the. Uh, this is the two slit, and this is the screen. This is the screen where we are going to be observe. This is the capital D, and this distance is d. Okay. So here itself we are going to consider the same. Here the x is nothing but the distance between the slit and this uh, uh, this screen to um, this wire, and d is the length of the wire. So hence y n can be written as n lambda x by d. Okay. So here above wire act as a one source and below wire act as another source. Above wire above wire will be act as a one source here one source. This is one source, and below where one source. That means it will be act as a double slit experiment. Only for that we have been considered this path reference like n lambda, path reference for the dark fringe two n plus one lambda by two, and for the uh, bright fringe y n y n equal to n lambda x by d. So hence these two sources act as two co. Uh, co these two sources act as two coherence. coherence okay coherence sources you have to correct it here coherence sources and can produce interference which is represented in this figure so in this shadow region we can get this type of interference pattern which is observed in our young's double slit experiment young's double slit experiment what type of interference pattern you have been observed may you have been remembered that this is this is interference pattern we observed in young's double slit experiment like that that type like like this type of interference pattern we are going to be observe in the shadow region and from the from the above above p and below m or in the illumination area we are going to get decreasing of intensity of the uh, light or diffraction pattern then now if we are going to consider the thick wire thick wire when uh, this wire is going to be considered thick then the so called diffraction pattern will be this one okay so uh, here like this this and then above this is shadow region
shadow region and this is illuminated region region this is also illuminated region so in shadow region we are not going to get any type of interference pattern only one bright fringe is going to be observed and illuminated region in the illuminated region side we are going to get only the diffraction pattern which is maximum and then decrease and here we can observe this diffraction pattern we observed where where we observe we observe at the straight edge in case of straight edge you can found that i am going to show you uh, you can found here whenever we have been discussed about the straight edge case this is the intensity means at the straight edge uh, it is uh, that means you can see at the exactly this is the straight edge now so at the straight edge at o it is maximum or nearby o it is maximum then it is decreased with with closeness of the fringes so like that here uh, we can see that at the a at the a the above a will be act as a straight edge below a will be act as another straight edge and if ab will be thin we are going to get the interference pattern like this if ab will be thick we are going to get the interference pattern in between the, in the shadow region will be this but above the shadow region and below the shadow region above the shadow region below the shadow region means above p and below m in this region we are going to get the fringe pattern or intensity pattern or diffraction pattern which will be equal to the straight edge that means will be will be equivalent to this one this one so that type of also we got see this this type of we got okay so this is all about explanation of thin wire and thick wire uh, by using fresnel's assumption or fresnel's we can say fresnel's diffraction pattern of a wire you have to go through this video with your note okay thank you